How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany, if you didn't know. Today, we're going to be talking about my notes setup, as well as how I keep track of my tickets for my work things. All things work today. So, let me just give you a brief history about why I do this to begin with. If you have not been aware, if you're not aware of my channel, if you're not aware of what happened last year, I got laid off from a job. When that happened, I got cut off from everything that I've ever worked on for that company. So I had no access to the notes that I had or anything. So I said, we're not doing that anymore, okay? We are not about this life anymore. We're gonna keep track of the things that we work on so that we have those at our disposal. Now, I've created this Notion setup for my own personal account for the purposes of keeping track of the tickets that I have at my disposal. I have no intention of using any of this information should anything happen to me at this job. I don't intend to use it maliciously or anything of that sort of thing. I just don't have time for that. So I'm just going to be honest with you. It's specifically so I can know what's going on while I'm working. And then also the ticket process is specifically so that I can keep track of the things that I have completed so that I can successfully talk about them later. Now, with that information, I would like to guide you through how I keep track of all these things while I'm working. So if you're interested in that, and I do hope that you are, please continue watching and we'll go through that right now with a screen share. Take it away, past Tiffany. <laughs> or is she the future? No one really knows. All right, so here is my setup. Real quick, on the side, I have authentication. My dev environment, so as you can see, my dev environment basically has all the commands I need in order to um, get my dev environment up and running each and every day. And also any sort of errors I've run into, how they were fixed, and that sort of thing. And I keep all this basically because, you know, you just never know. Some other notes are kind of sporadic in here, but for the most part, the dev environment is commands. We're moving on to the code environment now. The code environment is honestly kind of the same, except it's a little bit more specific to the code base. So here you can see I have docs, and this is docs for the code base, testing, and then we use feature flags and so those are kind of feature flag commands that I've either ran into, worked with, um, and am wanting to keep them somewhere. So while I am coding on an everyday basis, I could just come in here, copy it, and then paste it based on where I'm working in. And then there's another one, data for visual regression tests, which is a ticket that I was um, working on and I ran across some things in there. So. The testing is probably the biggest piece of this. We have unit tests, API tests, acceptance tests, and uh, visual regression tests. Um, and I feel like there's probably more, but all the commands for it are in there. I'm gonna skip the ticketing section. We'll look at GitHub tips. And I just created this on a one-off. Um, I didn't know how big it was gonna get, if it was gonna get any bigger, but it's basically, um, notes that say, hey, um, here just here's what I had to do in Git to um, remove a file. Like I didn't know how to do that before. And I looked it up and I did it and then it worked and I saw that it was something that I didn't know how to do so I put it in GitHub Tips. The next section is learning slash investigating. So sometimes I do take time out to um, learn different things. As you can see from the top, I have a tab in there called Learning Docker. I actually have an account with educative.io and I will put the link below if you wanna check it out. But basically I subscribed to it earlier this year and they have a course on Docker. So I decided to go ahead and start learning a little bit of Docker things. And then um, there's also 
when I say slash investigating, right now we're trying to figure out new tools to come up to use for our retros that we have every week for the engineering team. So my research on the, those things are located here. Right now you just see like the tabs, uh, you know, like the little quotes for each one of these um, listed out. There are notes in each of these that are going to help determine which one is best for our team. I also have one for retros for epics. So we have retros for epics as well as retros for our engineering team. If you don't know what an epic is, an epic is like a very large, um, usually a feature or something that you want to modify, that you want to make better. And it has inside each epic, it has a list of tickets that need to be worked on in order for that epic to be completed. And so specifically for my team and for every other team um, uh, in this company, we have retros for each of our epics so that we can kind of determine what went well, what we could work on, what can do, what we can do better. And then I have an interviewing tab. Um, so I have not shared with y'all, but I have been working on, um, we just wrapped up the interview process and I've been helping out with interviews for probably a couple months now. Um, for the team, we were hiring a back-end developer and specifically, not just one, we were hiring multiple back-end developers. Um, and so as you can see, maybe from my notes here, um, we were hiring two mid-level developers and one junior developer. And so we finally wrapped up our interviewing process, which I'm super excited about. Um, and yeah, here was just, I was just dumping all the information for interviews. I will have more um, information about interviews in further videos. I've been taking some notes personally for myself um, to hopefully help you all that are interviewing or um, you know things to do that you can do, um, things that you could do to make your interview process um, kind of work good for not only you, but also for the people that's reviewing your work. Um, for our interviews, we have a code review feedback and we just ask you to, you know, submit some code that you're proud of and we look at it. So I have some tips for that. And then we have skills interviews. That is also the second portion that I um, helped out with as well, which is just being in the interview room asking questions. So that's another part of the process. But yeah, that's a whole nother video and I will talk about it then. Okay, so here's the ticket section. As you can see, I have a list of tickets here um, that I have worked on or have been a part of. So I create a new ticket and I've created a uh, template if you see here. The template as it stands is super basic. We do all of our tickets in JIRA. Let me just say that. And so since we have all of our tickets in JIRA, I basically copy the, the, um, the ticket number and the title from JIRA and paste those in here. There's usually a, also a description as well. And I go ahead and copy this description and the description usually has things that need to get done within the ticket, what they're expecting, um, and that sort of thing. The stuff at the top is the things that are specific to the ticket and are going to help me get started. The things at the bottom are the things that are going to help me move through the ticket and ultimately they're going to help me when I um, look back at this ticket and, and see all the things that have been done. So the first thing I have is what was the issue within the code base? And sometimes I put here also like where it is in the code base, if there's like a specific method that I'm looking at, or if there's a specific, um, you know, database table that I'm looking at, I, I look at those too. So anything that's going to help me figure out where this is, I put here and it's really so that when I can, when I look back at this, and let's say I have a similar issue in the future, I can then be like, oh wait, I've done something on this page. Um, or this sounds similar to me, let me look up what this is and where I found it at. And then I say, how did I resolve this issue? And so whenever I'm talking about, whenever I'm talking about how I resolved the issue, I'm basically saying, okay, 
how did I come up with the solution for this? Like, what did I end up doing? What things did I change in the code base? That sort of stuff. The last thing is, who did I work with to resolve this issue? And it's just like, okay, who did I reach out for help? Who did I reach out for questions? Um, and admittedly, after using this for, this is, I've been using this for probably the last few months or so. And uh, I don't always write down everybody that I interact with, but I kind of hit the high points of the person or group of people, depending on the occasion, who have helped me resolve this issue. This is not a set list of things that I can do with this template. As I've mentioned, I think um, I add things to this list that are not here and that is perfectly fine because I want to create as much detail as I can. Here are some examples. That's basically it. Like, uh, it doesn't have to, I just wanted to give you some examples so you can see that there's no rhyme or reason in this. It's just so what makes have, sense for you. You have a brief overview of my notes set up and how I use my notes for what. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you use these things for your own workspace so that you can be in control of like keeping track of the knowledge that you are learning and also that you are working on on a consistent basis. And until, until next video, take care of yourself and be kind to others and I will see you next time. Bye y'all.